It is 4.19 a.m. Wednesday, March 31st here in Japan, and about a week ago, the NBME released six new forms, 25 through 30. One of the factoids they're assessing is mannitol, how this relates to changes in plasma vasopressin, which is your ADH, and your plasma osmolality. So uh, I'm just going to be concise here, break this into two parts, mainly the first being addressing this question head on, the second being uh, discussing some high yield factoids about mannitol external to this question isolation that you still need to know for your simile. So mannitol, what is it? It's a sugar alcohol. It's going to increase plasma oncotic pressure. Okay, It's going to increase solute pressure within the blood, increase plasma osmolality. Think of like glucose or albumin. They're solutes. They increase oncotic pressure within the blood. They function to increase osmolality. So if we give mannitol a sugar alcohol, we're going to increase plasma osmolality. So we know we're dealing with answers C, D, or E, where plasma osmolality is increased along the x-axis. And then we say, how is this going to change ADH? ADH will be released in response to increased serum tonicity, that is if serum sodium is increased, as well as if serum osmolality has increased. So there's a lot to overthink in this question. I'll discuss that in a second, but the answer is going to be C because we just said mannitol will increase osmolality of the serum due to increasing oncotic pressure and increase osmolality will cause the, re the release of ADH from the posterior pituitary and more production from the hypothalamus. So our answer is C. Now I say this can get confusing because the fact that we give mannitol, it's going to draw water out of the interstitium, out of the intracranial compartments. And a student could then make the argument and say, well, if we're drawing free water into the vasculature, and that could cause hyponatremia, which in a very acute setting, mannitol can, as per the literature, student will say, well, shouldn't that decrease ADH, therefore? Uh, but it doesn't. Uh, ADH doesn't decrease because the overwhelming increase in plasma osmolality is still stimulating ADH secretion. The other thing is that uh, the osmolality will never decrease in any form. So even though we're drawing free water into the vasculature, we merely have that increase uh, in plasma osmolality from the initial infusion of mannitol, followed by the drawing of free water causing the osmolality to gradually go back to normal, but never will we have a decrease in plasma osmolality. Some students might say, but what is ADH actually doing? Okay, so ADH inserting aquaporins in the distal kidney in the medullary collecting duct, functioning to increase free water reabsorption. So one could make the argument that if plasma volume is going to increase in the setting of mannitol, wouldn't that be, it does not sound counterintuitive. Why would ADH increase, right? We're not going to, why would we want free water reabsorption in the distal kidney if mannitol is causing an increase in plasma volume? Once again, it's because the osmolality of the serum has substantially increased. And so that's why ADH is going to go up. Okay. So we have two counter arguments. One, we just said acutely mannitol can cause hyponatremia from causing the, the, the drawing of free water from the interstitium and intracranial compartment into the blood, and then two, increasing plasma volume. So these are counter arguments against the secretion of ADH. We say we, we, we could make the contention that ADH should decrease, but then we have the strong salient point that uh, mannitol is increasing osmolality, and this wins. This effect eclipses the other two. So that's our answer choice C. Now, some high yield factoids external to this question isolation is mannitol, it's an osmotic diuretic. Okay, so it's going to, the same way it can draw free water into the vasculature, it's going to do that within the proximal straight tubule, thin descending loop of Henle. If ever you get a question where they have a drawing of a nephron with letters at different locations, where does mannitol act? you're going to choose the thin descending loop of Henle. If that is not labeled, then you can just choose the proximal straight tubule, which is immediately before the thin descending loop of Henle. And if that's not labeled either, just choose the proximal convoluted tubule, okay? The point being mannitol acts proximally in the kidney. So it'll draw free water into the nephron and increase diuresis, increase excretion of urine that way. Um, and that's going to ultimately function to decrease plasma volume. So very acutely, mannitol increases osmolality, therefore increases plasma volume, but then it acts as, a, as an osmotic diuretic, ultimately decreasing plasma volume. So we don't want to give it in the setting of heart failure. Patients who are very sensitive to increase in preload, they can have exacerbation of heart failure if 
mannitol is given because of that acute increase in plasma volume. But then ultimately, the phase two component of mannitol is it decreases plasma volume acting as, as, as an osmotic diuretic. So mannitol, we normally use it for increased intracranial pressure. When we're treating intracranial pressure, we're going to hyperventilate a patient. So decreased CO2 causes decreased cerebral perfusion. Normal CO2 is 33 to 44 millimeters of mercury. So permissive hypocapnia, where we hyperventilate a patient about 26 to 33 millimeters of mercury, where we're decreasing cerebral perfusion, okay, decreasing intracranial pressure, but not so much where we cause ischemic stroke. So permissive hypocapnia, okay, that's first step in addressing intracranial pressure, increased intracranial pressure. The second, giving mannitol. So that's going to draw free water out of the intracranial compartment, okay? Don't choose mannitol on the USMLE before choosing intubation hyperventilation. This is on the NBMEs, all right? So your factoid being don't give mannitol in heart failure. Your second factoid being mannitol is used uh, to treat intracranial pressure after you intubate and hyperventilate. Uh, decreased CO2 causes decreased total perfusion. And then just knowing the mechanism of action of mannitol being that it's an osmotic diuretic, acts in the proximal kidney, okay? And so, yeah, that's your, that's your take home for this question, being that uh, mannitol will ultimately, uh, for USMLE questions, they want increased plasma osmolality and increased ADH, okay? ADH goes up because of your increase in plasma osmolality. So a lot we can talk about. That's uh, concise enough. If you liked this clip, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.